Hey guys, welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to unbox this Jingong JG1601 or M16 NAM style. Hey guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do consider liking and subscribing uh, and commenting because that interaction helps my channel get seen by the YouTube, YouTube algorithms and helps my channel to grow. If you do want to join the channel as a member, it's just 99 pence. There's links down below and there's uh, various perks for that as well. Totally optional. Really appreciate it if you do it. Totally fine if you don't. And if you haven't done, use the link down below to go and join my Discord and have a look at my socials. So today I owe a massive thanks to a good friend of mine who has done me a solid and um, allowed me to use a couple of his new bits to do unboxings for the channel. So just as a sort of pre-note, this is an unboxing only. There is no follow-up to this unboxing video like I usually would do with a, a December or whatever. So he's bought this from Patrol Base. It is an... Uh, Jingong M16 in the style of something from Vietnam, uh, which we'll have a look at in a minute. So just a couple of little stickers. You know, generally JG make okay looking boxes. Internally, I'm a little bit more impressed because they use uh, foam cutouts to protect their stuff. So we'll get that lid lifted. So we've got ourselves a little manual in there, some targets. I do like the uh, Jingong manuals, I'm not going to lie, and I've done the uh, G3s in the past. Their menu manuals tend to be quite uh, handy. They've got a couple of targets, just some general information in English, uh, as well as uh, Japanese or Chinese, I'm not entirely sure. Um, just about general usage. It's nice that it actually matches the actual model that's in here. Uh, just showing you about maintenance, how to split it, that kind of stuff. Uh, battery connections, motor adjustment, that kind of stuff in the blow diagram. Got some original safety information uh, from uh, Gunfire as well, which must be where Patrol Base got this particular model from. So get that out of the way. So we've got in here, a little slip just saying that they've tested the FPS. We've got a little bag of BBs that we're never going to see the light of day again. A European style charger, which is no good to me. We've got a little tiny high cap with the uh, ubiquitous winding key, which people either love or hate, which we'll discuss in a minute. We've got an 8.4 volt uh, 1100 NIM type battery. And there she is, the piece de resistance, what we're actually here for, this little beauty which is stuck in the foam. We've also got a cleaning rod underneath, as you would expect to find. So get that out of the way. Now, that is quite the long boy. Um, that is a pretty big piece of kit. So it is in the style of uh, an N16 that has been to Vietnam. Now, obviously, there are going to be inconsistencies. And I get that. I appreciate that, that there are inconsistencies. Um, but, you know, my friend wanted something that looked like the part particularly from a distance, and ultimately, you know, the price point sort of makes a lot of sense. So he paid about £140 for this from Patrol Base. There is another model of this that has a uh, fully alloy body. This is the polymer body, but we'll discuss that in a minute. So you've got your tulip style uh, flash hider at the front then, metal onto a metal outer barrel and a metal front sight. You've then got your triangular handguard there, uh, which is very, Plasticky. There's no barrack tests here anymore, ladies and gents. And uh, the gent that told me about that, we had a good discussion about the uh, the bike test. I apologise, I won't do that again. I know it's a bit weird here. So the handguard then. It's a bit creaky if you are, for, and I'm having to put some real force to get that creakiness out of there. Um, you know, there's no other creakiness other than that. It's it's fairly solid, tiny little bit of play, but I'm having to really work it to get that creak. So rest assured, it is plasticky, but it's not going to creak and give you away constantly. Uh, you've got your delta ring, you've got your integrated uh, carry handle, which is also your part of your sight system, um, which is adjustable left and right um, for windage. The front sight is also adjustable as well. Let me just check something. Uh, 
they often include a little key to adjust that front side. They haven't done, uh, but they sometimes do. So we've got uh, your working bolt release there. So press the bolt release and it releases the bolt back again, which is quite nice, even on this sort of uh, price level of gun, that's, that's quite nice. You've got your traditional looking um, pistol grip. <coughs> now I will say, I've noticed already, the corners are pretty damn sharp on there. On both sides, that's really uncomfortable. It's catching my fingers already, as you can see there, just from a couple of times I've held, held it. So definitely a pair of gloves are probably gonna be needed with this. Possibly just take a file and just shave those down a little bit, just to take the sharpness of that edge off. If then that is a polymer body, but again, that is the rest of the body making noise. There is no movement or very little movement in that. The handle itself, the carry handle, does move a little bit, but I'm having to put real force into that. I'll be honest, it's pretty damn sturdy, really. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of these now, and I know people prefer the alloy bodies. I get that, you know, metal body and all that kind of stuff. I, ag I agree, but that's pretty damn solid. You know, uh, as we're seeing with a lot of these replicas, you know, these bodies are really solid, despite them being plastic. So it is plastic hence making it a little bit lighter. It's probably about three kilograms, maybe a little bit less. It's not It's not massively heavy. You've then got your plastic stock as well, um, which has got room for absolutely enormous batteries as well, which we'll discuss uh, after we've done the, uh, the, the shooting footage and things like that. So the high cap then uh, is a metal high cap. It is obviously an M16 type. It comes with a winding key. Now I know a lot of people dislike these and I can see why, I can understand why, uh, as they under they dislike high caps and stuff. I totally get, and often I run mid caps instead of high caps. Um, but I do find that these winding caps, particularly when you're loading your mags at the start of a, a day or whatever, or between games, you know, instead of start giving it that, you can just, it's so much easier to wind that up and get rid of that out of the way into a pocket and then the mag's wound and you just have to keep it wound mid-game. So myself, unfortunately, I don't mind the keys at all. I've got no issues with them, but I do know a lot of people dislike them. Um, but it should take any M16 mag in general, uh, and I'll do the check on that whilst I'm doing the chronoing and rate of fire. Um, so just to show you the batteries then, uh, I seem to have had a, a raft of bad luck with batteries lately. So I've still got the new Pro 7.4 volt uh, LiPo 2200 milliamp. Again, I'll put a link to that below. The 11.1, at the minute, um, my new Prol 1, one of the batteries off the top literally just popped off. Literally just clean popped off one day and nothing, it's dead. So I've had to get rid of that. Um, so today I'm using this VP Racing 2600 milliamp 25C rated and I will provide a link to this battery down below. I've then got the uh, 8.4 volt NIM type 1600 VP racing and a 9.6 1600. Again, I'll provide links to those as well. And then last but not least, we will also use the uh, NIM that's included in this package as well to see how that gets on. So I'll see you in a second.
and we are back then from the chrono and the range check. So uh, let's start with the 7.4. So the 7.4 then that was giving us about 13 to 13.1 rounds per second. Pretty decent. It's more or less in line with a lot of the other replicas we've had, particularly of the, the Chinese ones, the Seamers and other JGs and things. We then went to the 8.4. We had a slight downcrease now often we sort of get mixed results i get mixed results sometimes it, it works as well as the 7.4 sometimes not quite as good but today it was a little bit down not massively um we we're getting 12.4 to 12.8 rounds per second so very very close to the 7.4 but there is definitely a little bit of difference in there um and considering that this is very similar in dimensions and we've got a hell of a lot more milliamp hours mah which means this battery will effectively power this gun longer you know the 7.4 wins out there we then got the natural jump to 9.6 then where we went up to 15.2 to 15.4 rounds per second which is the sort of kind of jump i would expect so it's only a couple of rounds faster uh, per second than the 7.4 then we're on the 11.1 where we're getting well as you heard i was really impressed with it 21.4 to 21 uh, 20 1 .1 to 21.4 rounds per second so easily over 21 rounds a second uh, usually often we're getting about 18 19 rounds per second on a 11.1 uh, so a little bit faster than usual um the included nim type did perform uh, pretty much exactly the same as the um included uh, as the vp racing 8.4 so we got sort of into the 12s 12 and a half sort of rounds per second so i was pretty happy with that but again though this is only 1100 milliamps please do not if you're going to buy this and use this this will not last you a full day's gameplay okay so just be careful with that that this will not last you a full day okay um particularly if you trigger happy like me you're probably going to need two or three of those to last a full day um, in terms of the chrono, I'm not sure what's going on for my chrono. I think the batteries must be dying. Um, today's the day I filmed both this and the SIG uh, F226 unboxing, and I've been having issues uh, for both shooting tests. Um, but basically, ultimately, I was getting erratic readings anyway, um, which we often find with uh, brand new out-of-the-box JGs, that they're often erratic, but their compression is usually very, very good. So we're getting 225 FPS was the lowest true region I got and the highest was 332 FPS so it has been pre-downgraded now I know a lot of the JG stuff is sort of coming out of the 360 to 380 mark um, you know think back to the, like the JG G3s that I did were about that mark um, and the compression was excellent now this is the same gearbox as in those so I would expect the same kind of quality compression that's in there as well now in terms of uh, the range then we were getting probably just touching 40 meters out of that uh, out of the shooting um, I didn't have to do much adjusting to the hop unit but I did get the same thing again where it didn't seem to be hopping at all and then all of a sudden it was over hopping I had to dial it back down uh, so again probably just a good barrel clean we'll just get any gunk out of there uh, and make that better one of the things I do like is in the stock it is unfortunately wired to mini Tamiya um, I'm much more of a Dean's convert now and as I know many 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 people are uh, you've got your fuse holder in there the stock itself, hopefully that you can see that in the camera, is foam lined on both sides. So gone are the days uh, when you used to buy something like a classic Army M16, which I had at one point, and uh, it had a um, solid stock like that, and you threw a battery in, there was no padding, and it just rattled around, and as you moved, the battery could be heard rattling about in there. That foam padding, I know it's not to everybody's liking, but it will help to hold your battery secure, meaning it's not rattling about, and it's one less thing that's gonna make a noise on this piece of kit for you, which is obviously something you, you would want. So just get that out of the way. So just to show you, this is the biggest of the batteries. I've got the 11.1, and that will fit. Just pull the wire out of the way a little bit. That's going in. And it goes all the way in, um, as this is the battery I uh, chronoed on earlier. And it will go in there quite easily. And it's held very snug in the way, uh, out of the way. There we go. It 
go. And it goes back far enough that I can get all the wiring in nice and easy as well. So that's quite a substantial battery that's going in there. Now we're going to do the glove test or glove usage, just see if I can handle it with the gloves on. My Discord is the one to thank for this. So in terms of the main operation, we've been through this sort of style before. The mag, easy in and out. The magazine reloading is going to depend on your gloves. I think that I've got lucky then, I think that deals quite easily open. I can wind it easily, so I'm happy with that. In terms of the hop, I've already caught the... Uh... Now, I can adjust it, but I've got no real sensation in my fingers of how much I'm moving it. I'm you literally having to watch like a hawk to see how much I've moved that um, in there. So just to be aware, obviously, if you are going to adjust your hop with gloves on, which typically we wouldn't do anyway, there's, uh, you know, watch out for that. Fire selector is nice and easy. No issues whatsoever. that. Charging handle and bolt release, absolutely dead easy. And the stock then for the battery. Oh, I'm being undone here by a... Ah! Ow! Oh, there we go. So I was struggling to get enough purchase on the grip there to pull it down and open the latch at the same time. Once I'm in there, I can quite easily just get the battery in and out. Uh, where have you gone? A little bit trickier actually, because I can't. Yeah. Do you know what? I've been undone by a battery connector. That is appalling. There we go. The fuse connector shielding's coming off. I will sort that out in a minute. But I could get in there now and change that battery. So I'm quite happy that generally most of the things I would need to do with gloves, I can do uh, quite happily. Since I'm here, I might as well do the uh, fuse connector. So you've got in this little tub, two little clips. That the fuse just sits in like that, click together, and then this box just goes around it. So you can see there is a place for each of these clips to sit in. Just line them up properly. A little bit tricky when I'm trying to hold the, this up close to the camera. There we go. And then they sit down into that. And then the lid just comes down Closers. Now, if this does easily open in yours, it might be worth just wrapping a little bit of tape around it just to keep it uh, nice and secure. But then that can go back in there nice and easy and closed up. So, I will leave the usual photos of this in a moment. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed this immensely. Fairly decent performance. I've always been a, a, a sort of big fan of JG. I think they make okay products especially for their price point you know performance is nothing too special um, but then the kind of price we're paying compared to a lot of other stuff are we really should we really be expecting that much range is okay rate of fire okay couple of little bits could be tweaked uh, and it would be much much better but it's pretty solid and stable and easy going so I'm, I'm pretty damn happy with that so again Many thanks to my good friend that has let me make use of this. I'll make sure he gets a patch and a couple of stickers. And uh, please do make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Use the link down below to visit my Discord. You really should come along and join and my other socials. And I will see you next time. Bye.